thank you everybody for uh, joining me virtually. Um, uh, hopefully uh, you are uh, in semi warm area. I'm, I'm in the Palm Springs area and it's almost 100 degrees today. So um, it's a little intense here, but uh, we like that. Um, so I'm, I'm gonna show you uh, through PowerPoint um, a few images of past projects and uh, some of the images of three half lozenges and kind of talk through that a little bit. I am a light-based artist. I um, really interact with color, with light and shadow, um, with the environment, with reflection, um, all of the kind of different variables um, in which light presents itself. And uh, I'm sort of always working on three different series of works, the light works, the light and shadow works, and the mirror works. Um, and it's this kind of oscillation back and forth, as I say, between color, light and shadow, and reflection. Um, <clears throat> I'm also really interested in creating these more immersive environments. Um, you know, something where you can really step up to it or step within a kind of spatial condition where you may be enveloped by color and reflection and really be presented with an experience that you have never seen before. <clears throat> I also do a, a lot of commission-based work where I'm sort of challenged by the site, uh, by the conditions that exist there. And it's a way for me to get out of the comfort zone of my studio and to be challenged by the context and the parameter that exists in all these different sites that I'm presented with. Sometimes that's like this piece, quarter mile arc that runs along the entire ocean front in Laguna that was a temporary piece up for just three days, but here reflecting sunset. Or the inaugural Desert X, uh, the circle of land and sky, where really this piece became almost like a tool for viewing the environment where people would flock to it at sunset to experience the sunset through the reflection of the sunset within the artwork itself. So, Collaborations with site. I'm gonna talk a little bit about that, focus in a little bit today. Um, and I popped in this Robert Irwin quote that I really believe in, which I'm gonna read it. Site determined art draws all of its cues, reasons for being from its surroundings. This requires the process to begin with an intimate hands-on reading of the site. A quiet distillation of all of this determines all the facets of the sculptural response. So I am trained as an architect and an artist. And as an architect, it was really a sort of carved into my creative soul that um, by interacting with a site, I can learn from that site and have a discussion with that site. And through a kind of collaboration with that site, I would say reach to a creative level that I could not have gotten to on my own. So a few examples of this that I'm gonna run through. One being Open Sky, which was my first international installation um, in, a, in the open air courtyard of a Renaissance palazzo, Palazzo Isambardi in Milan, that really was about reflecting both the architecture and sky, but ultimately pulling the sky down to the ground um, so that as you walk through the colonnade and turn this corner, you saw this kind of crystal, super precise reflection of both architecture and sky. But as you walked closer and closer to the center of that circle, you were ultimately surrounded by nothing but a reflection of the sky. You'd see the clouds moving by, the birds flying above, and you were looking down and surrounded by 50 foot high, 50 foot wide, 50 foot long uh, uh, Renaissance architecture. The other is a commission. Uh, this is called Santa Monica Linear. It's a 30 foot long, two and a half foot high uh, a private commission I worked on just uh, got installed just last fall uh, in 2020 of all years. And it was really about inserting uh, a reflected band of sky and landscape uh, within this 110 foot wall of lush greenery. Um, an amazing site at a private home this is a, an aerial view from above with this amazing modernist architecture sprawling across the site. Yes, that's a 40 foot Nancy Rubin sculpture in the corner and an early James Terrell piece. And then that's the 
the white band there with the scaffolding, that's the piece being installed on that site. But when I first visited the site, I saw this, this, as I say, this kind of 110 foot wall of, of green, this lush hillside and these 60 foot eucalyptus trees. And so while confronted with this wall of green, I just wanted to almost like I had like licked my thumb and rubbed out the landscape and just inserted the sky. So it's a piece that is always changing because the sky itself is always changing. But also as you move through the site, you have different angles, different angles of reflection. And then in the evening, that pure mirror turns into shifting, moving gradients of colored light that emanate from edge to edge or from the center outward or outward in. It was really about scale, about interacting not only with the scale of that landscape, but also the scale of the site, um, which was really a special opportunity. The next couple projects really take on this collaboration more distinctly with a piece of architecture. Uh, this is Lucid Stead before it was Lucid Stead. This, this is a, a typical homesteader shack that you'll see up in the Joshua Tree Desert. It's about 14 feet by 20 feet long. And it was the kind of minimal structure that the government required you to build so that you could establish your address. And then a couple years later, file with the government to then own the five acres of land that the structure was placed on. So when I bought my five acres up there, it came with this shack. No glass in the windows, no doorway, no electricity, no plumbing, no water, no services. Uh, pretty raw, uh, pretty extreme. Um, but ultimately the collaboration of me with this shack resulted in this instead where every other wood siding was replaced with mirror. And those four windows in the doorway were infilled with these mirror light boxes. So it's almost like half of the shack was erased during the day. But the, by erasing half of it, it actually became more prominent within that desert landscape. And really, you know, sort of using the beauty of the desert itself as material placed onto the shack via reflection. But around dusk, the lights would slowly emerge, white light from the inside, colored light from within those four windows and the doorway. And then ultimately as the sun set, really the sense of reflection began to almost diminish and you were left with these floating fields of color in the night sky. Another sort of architectural collaboration was in downtown Detroit. This is late 2018. Um, and this is uh, an existing uh, sky bridge that's about 110 feet long. Uh, strangely enough, on the 16th floor, spanning between two existing skyscrapers, uh, one from 1958 and the other from the 1920s. Uh, the sky bridge was built in 1972 to connect the buildings because they were both owned by Michigan Gas and Oil. But in the 90s, the buildings were sold uh, there was no need to use the sky bridge. It was different companies on each floor. And essentially the sky bridge uh, remained with a chain and padlock on the door handles on each end for about 25 years. And I was approached uh, by a gallery in Detroit, Library Street Collective sort of saying, hey, we love your work, but we'd like you to look at this site and sent me essentially this image um, and saying that this would be my site to collaborate with. So upon visiting, I thought that um, what I really wanted to do was animate this existing piece of architecture. And I could take each of those windows that you see and turn them into individual pix controllable pixels of light. So while we're seeing this static image here, this is a piece that turns on at sunset, slowly emerges, and then it runs through its color choreography that I've said. It's about an hour and a half long program that loops into itself. And it's special because it, again, is up on that 16th floor. And you can see how it's interacting with the architecture and pushing that light across the white modular concrete of the skyscraper to the left there. Um, <clears throat> but really it's, uh, it's a piece of art that's operating at the scale of architecture within the context of you know, a great American city. Um, so it was a real honor to be able to contribute uh, to Detroit in this way and create this kind of icon 
that creates a, a very unique experience and light that ultimately now is a daily evening occurrence. So that leads me to Newark, to three half lozenges. And, you know, I was, I first met Tricia uh, when she came out to see Desert X in 2017, uh, which I was part of the inaugural Desert X. Um, and she got to see the studio and um, with uh, Stephen, the director at that time. And I was invited back to Newark to um, kind of walk the campus, walk the buildings and determine if there was an opportunity to create some kind of installation uh, within the museum. And it so happened at that time that the museum was uh, kind of going through its second floor and entry renovation. And I saw the second floor galleries and the gallery walls built uh, very close to the backside of these windows and questioned at that time whether those windows might be able to be an opportunity for, let's say, a canvas for light. So these beautiful historic images, uh, I think, kind of show the consistency um, of the face of the museum and the image, the public face of the museum through time. Um, we can see how that is currently and it might be even a little bit uh, slightly different today. This is an image that's probably about a year and a half old. Um, but I was really focused on these you know, really gorgeous um, double height windows that really are kind of the historical aesthetic presence of the museum. And this is a page right out of my sketchbook. And you can see the, the date there, uh, 07, 12, 17. And you can see there it says Newark SFO PSP. I always do this in my sketchbooks. I draw a lot on the plane. This is on my flight from Newark to SFO to, to San Francisco and then down to Palm Springs. So I was already sort of had a vision uh, for what this installation could be on that first visit. Um, and I was able to sketch that out here uh, for the first time on the plane back home. And really what I thought was fascinating were was those three windows and the shapes and even how the windows are delineated really related to this whole series of the light works called the lozenges. Um, and this is a flat lozenge number three, a horizontal variation. This is lozenge seven, which was a series of vertical upright uh, lozenges. And I began to make this immediate connection with this series of work and the reality of the kind of structural layout of the glass within those windows. So <clears throat> these are a few renders that begin to uh, show the effect. This is a, a slowly shifting, slowly moving installation that you know is sort of always in a state of change. I'm gonna run through an animation here that I created. As you can see back in September of 2017, this was really part of my very first presentation to the museum. And thinking really just showing how the museum can have this new face at night and really reach out to the city in an artful way, in a unique way um, that somehow balances the historical nature, the historical reality of those, those original images of the museum during the day. But then around sunset, these lights slowly emerge and roll into their color choreography where they're shifting into these different compositions of light uh, using the architecture as a canvas. What's exciting is that the park is right there, right? And that there's the grid of the city and the opportunity to see this installation from so many different angles. Um, I really hope that uh, this kind of, you know, presents the museum almost as this kind of positive billboard uh, in the evening um, and uh, really inspires people to discover uh, what's inside of these walls, um, but also just to perhaps uh, view the city of Newark itself uh, quite literally in a new light. So there's a series of these different compositions I mentioned. There's here's just a few examples as I'm calling them three varied gradating half lozenges. And it might take two to three minutes for that transformation to shift color, or it might be identical lozenges. There's so many different variants of composition. Here's a 
kind of grid of just a sampling of what we will eventually see on that facade. A few different views, just getting that feel of uh, the light emanating through the windows, sometimes lighting that arch at the, tight, at the top, sometimes not, so that it's just a gradient across a rectangular surface. But being able to step back and see this from a distance within the context of the city, uh, for me, is probably one of the most exciting realities. That again, it is a piece of art that is truly at the scale of architecture. <laughs> 